safety behaviours play a key role in the maintenance of anxiety. They work in the short term but maintain anxiety in the long term. For example, Laura has a fear of spiders. She checks every room she enters, avoids going on holiday and never enters her garden. She's on guard all of the time. Or we can look at Graham who wears headphones in public, not to listen to music, but so people don't talk to him. He fears he wouldn't know what to say if someone started a conversation. Laura and Graham are using safety behaviours. By avoiding anxiety, they have never learned how to effectively manage it. Safety behaviours include mentally rehearsing conversations before they happen, looking at your phone so people don't talk to you, and avoiding places you associate with panic. Using safety behaviours make you feel less anxious in the moment, but in the long term, they become a trap that prevents you from living your life fully. What is the difference between a safety behaviour and a coping strategy? Safety behaviours display some similarities to coping strategies, so it's important you can tell the difference. For example, Richard has social anxiety. He's been invited to a wedding, so he asks his friend to accompany him. To discover if Richard is using a safety behaviour or coping strategy, we'll first need to discover its purpose. We can do this by asking the following question. Are you approaching or avoiding your anxiety? We discover that Richard is taking his friend to the wedding because he doesn't feel able to attend on his own. It would be far too anxiety provoking. It's therefore evident that Richard is approaching his anxiety rather than avoiding it. Therefore, taking his friend to the wedding would be a good coping strategy in the short term. But it's really important Richard doesn't see this as a long-term strategy. He needs to do some work with his psychological therapist so he can eventually go to social events on his own. Now, if Richard was taking his friend to the wedding so that his friend does all the talking for him, this would be a safety behaviour as it's an avoidance mindset rather than an approach mindset. It can be a challenge to identify the difference between safety behaviours and coping strategies. Sometimes the difference is very subtle. The CBT therapist Christine Podesky summarises it in this way. A safety behaviour is designed to eliminate danger. A coping strategy helps you approach, stay in and manage your anxiety. Safety behaviours may decrease anxiety in the short term and increase anxiety in the long term. A coping strategy may increase anxiety in the short term and decrease anxiety in the long term. A key indicator is that safety behaviours involve avoidance, whereas a coping strategy involves approach. Treatment for safety behaviours. Effective therapy involves learning to approach anxiety, not avoid it. This means exposing yourself to the anxiety-provoking situation in a gradual way. The learning provided via exposure actually helps rewire your amygdala, which is your brain's alarm bell or fear centre. So by repeatedly exposing yourself to the anxiety-provoking stimuli, you are showing your amygdala that it's actually quite safe. Your amygdala then begins to update and associate that previously feared situation with safety. Obviously, this is a challenging form of treatment, but research has shown it's exactly what's needed to rewire your amygdala. So the more you practice exposing yourself to your anxieties, the more likely your amygdala will respond in a calmer manner. Because exposure can involve an initial spike in anxiety, I would strongly suggest you work alongside a psychological therapist. They can then guide you through the process. Have a look at my video on the screen now as it shows how exposure works and I look forward to seeing you soon.